thank you very much and good afternoon everyone and and i'm so sorry for hijacking the session and i have uh, an engagement lined up in the afternoon so i just requested to be accommodated so ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here today and uh, at the outset i like to really express my sincere gratitude to all of you for conferring me with this honor of delivering the keynote address on software defined vehicles i believe that probably if if one thing which is going to define uh, or change the landscape of automobiles in india in the next 10 20 years is going to be the software defined vehicles so i stand before here you all of you here today to share that perspective of this revolutionary concept i think that is poised to reshape the future of mobility in an era of rapid technological advancements where software of course plays a pivotal role in almost every aspect of our lives i think every aspect of our lives it is only befitting that uh, you know uh, we apply this paradigm to the mobility space including but just just not limited to automobiles i think this is very very critical that including but just not limited to automobiles so as we all know that traditionally cars have been defined by physical hardware whether it's engine chassis you know transmissions uh but we believe very strongly that we are now entering a phase of revolution where software integration is gradually forming the core of product development be it in india or in fact globally as well you know so software defined vehicles they represent the shift from a traditional mechanical centric approach to a more software centric approach of course that is the that is the base but the question is what exactly are software defined vehicles so simply put these are automobiles that utilize software at the core to perform to control and of course manage the key functions of a car if you look around we all use smart devices you know smartphones uh, mobile phones modern mobility solutions and i think like the smartphones these mobility solutions will be able to upgrade they will be able to adapt they will be able to customize based on needs based on preferences based on functions of the end user so essentially we are looking at uh, a future that holds unlimited potential you know uh, uh, and of course unimaginable possibility and i'm saying this from experience because i have been going to korea now basically almost every 6 weeks and i can see i can see that actually happening and software will be used to unlock you know a new universe a totally new universe of benefit to customers so they uh, you know to start with basically there are two parts to a software defined vehicle you know the first is of course the electronic architecture or you call it ota uh, integrated ecus vehicle software and cloud services and the other is a service platform that integrates mobility and connected services and also in fact considers third party operators so you can see that at a first glance itself we can identify that uh, these these vehicles these sdvs they hold the potential to create a more co controlled more coordinated and of course safe mobility ecosystem i think safe is very very important because safety has really really become very very crucial and uh, and you can see, you will see that software holds the key to unravel a new level of precision uh, you know using this advanced uh, software system that are able to uh, compute a diverse range of permutations and combinations that significantly bring down the human error and we all know that it is because of these human errors you know that most of these accidents happen so of course we have all heard about the autonomous driving assistants and of course on the back of artificial intelligence i mean basically they can pivot a shift you know in this in this uh, uh, in this automobile revolution which is happening uh, whether it is uh, uh, in terms of collision assistance whether it is in terms of detection prevention i think we can really look forward to a much more safe uh, safer mobility options for our customers going forward in fact at hyundai uh, i'm very happy to report that we are spearheading this we had started this uh, you know uh, of course with tuso and ionic 5 and i'm so happy that even in a car like verna uh, almost close to 40% of the sales is happening with adas level 2 solution so you can see that 
customers have started uh, recognizing that how beneficial is this technology to us. In fact, my driver, you know, uh, who has been with me for 16 years, you know, uh, when, when he started the Tucson, he used to, you know, uh, switch it off. No boss, I want to control the car myself, you know, oh, forward collision assistance. I've seen the other drivers, uh, uh, you know, the car breaks, in, uh, breaks itself and all that. But I have seen how his thinking and his behavior has changed totally. And now he feels that it is so, so very comfortable to use, uh, uh, you know, level two uh, autonomous driving. In fact, in, at the Auto Expo, Auto Expo in Delhi, uh, you know, we had, we had this pavilion and we had so many different uh, count of count counters. But something which really, really uh, made the difference was this, uh, this experience which we were giving on, on ADAS, you know, to the, to the customers. So taking a step, of course, further, we can identify many other avenues, I think, to differentiate the application and use cases. Uh, in fact, we can imagine the future of mobility to be governed by a degree of personalization and customization, uh, you know, that a manufacturer, of course, offer, offers in cars. So we call it bespoke. I think this bespoke will pivot the, the brand perception for customers. Uh, and of course, as you all know, that softwares can be molded to do that. In fact, uh, we can really give a very, very differentiated driving experience to personalize preferences, be it the seating position, ambient temperature, of course, audio visual experiences, entertainment and whatnot. I think uh, we have just begun. We have probably just scratched the surface and there is so much more to come. In fact, if we see Hyundai cars, I think we have uh, most of our cars now have this segment leading OTA, OTA features. And, uh, and I'll be very, very honest to admit here that even we are surprised that how customers are really accepting and in fact intrigued now, yes, this is something which I actually want in a car. So gone are the days when they said that they just want a basic car or they just want, uh, you know, only it's, it was all about entertainment. But I think that uh, uh, this, uh, this automation which they feel will really make a difference to not only, not only react, but also proactively, you know, they can find so many solutions because even before the car, there's something happens to a car, you can, you can use the diagnostic solutions and uh, you can make sure that no time is wasted, uh, no inconvenience actually happens to the, to the customers. So, uh, uh, and, and I think the, the biggest excitement when I get is then when I, when I feel that maybe the same car on the weekdays can be a very fuel efficient car and on the weekends, just by software updation, it can act like maybe a little bit of exaggeration, maybe like a sports car or a luxury car, you know. So you don't need to change the car. You only require to, to uh, you know, update the uh, software. So I think this is the future that uh, probably we are, we, are, we are looking at. Uh, if I talk about Hyundai, uh, I think we started in sometime in 2019 with connected cars. And I'm very happy to see that today we have the maximum number of connected cars on Indian roads close to 425,000, I believe, already. Uh, and if, in fact, globally, we are now looking at 20 million connected cars by 2025. Uh, and of course, Hyundai Motor Group, I think, is working very diligently on industry-leading internally development connected car operating systems. We call it CCOS. Uh, I think that offers customers personalized services and, and, of course, then take a lead in providing transformative global mobility solutions. So I think uh, what are the advantages of SDV? So basically within, I think, uh, clearly an imminent promise of unlocking huge technological advantages. Uh, we are very confident that SDV will reduce vehicle development cost through generalizing ECUs, uh, internalizing software, enhancing future technologies like I talked about, like EDAS through electronic architecture, of course, uh, you know, high, uh, high performance computers and networks, OT updates, uh, I think which can really provide new services to customers and most importantly, improve vehicle performance all the time. I think this is what we're all used to those updates which we get on our Apple, uh, you know, mobile phone. But uh, I think we'll get used to an update happening on our car, which will actually improve the performance. But then, of course, uh, as human beings, we are never happy, we are never satisfied. So we'll say, is that it? Is that it about SDVs? I think answer is again a resounding no. Uh, I think the, uh, the SDVs have the capability 
to even revolutionize transportation. Transportation, I think, through application to infrastructure, where we look at possibilities of V2X, uh, vice versa, you so many use cases. I think we can integrate SDV with smart city infrastructure systems going forward. And of course, we can then unlock new possibilities of ideal traffic management as well. Uh, of course, congestion, we all know, uh, you know, how it affects us, how much time is wasted, how much fuel is wasted. I believe SDVs will play a very, very critical role going forward in reducing congestion, planning our lives much better. And of course, ultimate objective of reducing carbon emissions. I think we all know how important it is becoming in terms of India's commitment, of course, to meet those norms. And of course, efficient and sustainable fuel utilization. I think the other thing is that uh, through uh, through this V2X connectivity and real-time AI data analytics, uh, I think these software vehicles can compute the best routes to take and modify vehicle movements in real time. So changing traffic conditions, uh, they, we can communicate with other, other vehicles on the road. And of course, uh, this will lead to infrastructure for not only better safety, lesser congestion, most importantly, high level of efficiency as well. So if I talk about Hyundai, I think we are really looking at uh, adopting more and more this SDV transformation. Uh, I think Hyundai Motor Group's next generation platforms, I can, I can say that will fast track this. Our group, HMG, Hyundai Motor Group, has committed to invest 18 trillion won, which almost translates to $13.6 billion uh, by 2030 in sectors such as global software centers and of course R&D headquarters to further strengthen their software capabilities for SDV development. So you can see the commitment of the group and, uh, 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 you know, uh, very, very strongly aligned and uh, uh, really looking at not only, not only in the developed countries, but I think in the developing countries as well. So as I conclude, I would say that these SDVs, I think they characterize a transformative shift uh, in the mobility space. Uh, I think they will harvest the potential of software. We can, of course, like I said, improve safety, enhance personalization, and of course, achieve higher echelons of efficiency as well. I think the tenets of SDVs can help us reimagine mobility like never before, and of course, bring us closer to a connected and sustainable tomorrow. I think it's a very, very exciting time for the automobile industry. We all are... I think probably seeing a one in a hundred year of transformation. You know, I have been in this industry for 30 years now and uh, I can say with a lot of pride uh, as well as anticipation that the kind of change which has happened in the last 30 months uh, has not happened in the last 30 years. And I'm talking about 94 and I'm talking about uh, the change in demand patterns. I'm talking about a time when you used to pay full price of the car and wait for two years. I am talking about a time when you used to take a sweet box to a showroom to when your car got, uh, you know, ready for delivery. Uh, so even that change to a, to a today, uh, 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 you know, a customer driven uh, automobile market, I think it's, it's, it really fades out in the way, you know, the, 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 this mobility ecosystem is changing. The Ionic 5, in fact, which we launched and I was talking to one of the colleagues here, you know, you see the car and, and you, you have to get into the car to believe that, yes, this is actually a car and not a, not a computer. Uh, so, so, uh, and I believe while today it looks, it looks, uh, uh, you know, unique, but tomorrow, this is the tomorrow, uh, uh, you know, which is really going to shape up our India. And I believe that, uh, uh, play a very, very crucial role, not only in, uh, in, uh, in bringing India even closer to becoming the third biggest automobile market. But I think also defining the landscape of, you know, kind of taking a lead, you know, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, software development. So uh, uh, I think I need to really thank everybody for this patient hearing. Uh, uh, I can only assure you that uh, uh, at Hyundai, we'll continue to really pivot this and, uh, 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 and we are really willing to invest uh, you know, uh, and take a lead, uh, you know, even before it becomes uh, 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 kind of very well accepted because of the cost factor and all. Uh, but I think somebody has to take a lead and will be very, very happy to take this lead. Thank you very much and all the very best to you. Thank you.